ever wondered how a peaceful mountain could suddenly erupt in a fiery display of molten rock? Welcome to the intriguing world of volcanoes. These geological wonders have long captivated humanity, inciting a blend of fear and fascination. They are the embodiment of nature's paradoxical beauty, capable of creating and destroying in equal measure. Volcanoes are not just fiery spectacles though, they are windows into the Earth's interior, offering us glimpses of the dynamic processes occurring beneath the Earth's crust. By studying them, we can begin to understand the mechanisms that drive our planet's constant evolution. Furthermore, the study of volcanoes is crucial for predicting eruptions, a feat that could save countless lives. Despite our advances in technology, predicting exactly when a volcano will erupt remains a challenging task, adding to the enigma that surrounds these formidable forces of nature. Volcanoes, a spectacle of nature's fury, are a testament to the living, breathing earth beneath our feet. A volcano's birth is a spectacular event, a testament to the Earth's continuous evolution. Now, let's delve into the captivating process of how a volcano forms. The birth of a volcano starts deep beneath the Earth's crust. Here, in the Earth's mantle, temperatures reach sky-high levels, causing rocks to melt into a molten substance we know as magma. This magma is less dense than the surrounding rocks, and much like a cork in water, it seeks an upward path accumulating in magma chambers beneath the Earth's crust. Now, the stage is set for the formation of a new volcano. But how does this magma break through the Earth's crust? The answer lies in the Earth's tectonic plates. These massive slabs of rock form the Earth's outer shell and are constantly moving, albeit at a pace slower than a snail's. When these tectonic plates collide, one often slides beneath the other in a process known as subduction. This creates a pathway for the magma to reach the surface. As pressure builds within the magma chamber, the magma forces its way up through the crust, creating a fissure or vent. This is where the magic happens. Once the magma reaches the surface and comes into contact with the air or water, it cools rapidly, forming a hardened layer of volcanic rock. Over time, with repeated eruptions, this layer builds up, forming the conical structure that we associate with volcanoes. Now imagine this for a moment. The ground beneath you rumbles, the air fills with a thunderous roar, and suddenly molten rock and ash spew out from the Earth's crust. This is a volcanic eruption, nature's explosive spectacle. While eruptions can be devastating, they also create new landforms and contribute to the Earth's diverse landscapes. From the magnificent Mount Fuji in Japan to the enchanting underwater volcanoes in the Pacific Ocean, each volcano has its unique story of birth reminding us of the Earth's ever-changing and dynamic nature. A volcano's birth, as destructive as it may be, is a fascinating aspect of our planet's dynamic nature. Not all volcanoes are born equal. Their diversity is as wide as the landscapes they shape. It's time to delve into the realm of volcanic diversity. To start, we have shield volcanoes, named for their broad, shield-like shape. These gentle giants are primarily built by the accumulation of lava flows. The lava that pours out of shield volcanoes is low in viscosity, meaning it flows easily and tends to travel far before cooling and hardening. This results in the formation of wide, gently sloping mountains. Hawaii's Mauna Loa is a classic example of a shield volcano, with its sprawling flanks and long, fluid lava flows. Next up are the cinder cone volcanoes. These are the simplest type of volcano. They're generally small, and their eruptions are brief but explosive. Cinder cones are built from particles and blobs of congealed lava ejected from a single vent. As the gas-charged lava is blown violently into the air, it breaks into small fragments that solidify and fall as cinders around the vent to form a circular or oval cone. The Lava Butte in Oregon is a prime example of a cinder cone volcano. Finally, we have the composite or stratovolcanoes. These are the most menacing of the lot. Composite volcanoes are large, steep-sided mountains composed of layers of both lava flows and erupted sediment that have hardened over time. Their eruptions can be explosive, releasing clouds of gas and ash, as well as slow and oozy, with lava gradually creeping down their slopes. Mount Fuji in Japan and Mount St. Helens in the United States are both famous stratovolcanoes. Each of these volcano types has a distinct eruption style, shape, and size, contributing to the rich tapestry of our planet's landscapes. They are fascinating reminders of the potent forces that are continuously at work beneath our feet, shaping and reshaping our world in a fiery spectacle of nature's raw power. Understanding the different types of volcanoes helps us appreciate the variety in these fiery mountains. 
Volcanoes aren't just awe-inspiring natural wonders, they pose significant risks too. Let's start with lava flows, the fiery rivers that first come to mind when we think of volcanoes. While they might seem slow and harmless, they are far from it. Lava flows can reach temperatures of up to 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit and can cause severe burns and property damage. They are capable of obliterating everything in their path, from forests to entire towns. Next up is ashfall, another well-known volcanic hazard. When a volcano erupts, it can spew ash high into the atmosphere. This ash can travel hundreds or even thousands of miles, blanketing landscapes and creating health hazards. The fine particles can clog up engines, disrupt air travel, and when inhaled, can lead to respiratory problems. Now let's talk about something a bit more terrifying, pyroclastic flows. These are fast-moving, ground-hugging avalanches of hot gas, ash, and volcanic rocks. They can race down the sides of a volcano at speeds of up to 400 miles per hour, and temperatures can exceed 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Pyroclastic flows are deadly, and there's virtually no escape once they're headed your way. Last but not least, we have lahars or volcanic mud flows. These are mixtures of water and rock fragments that flow down the slopes of a volcano and typically along river valleys. They can move at high speeds and can be hot or cold. Lahars can cause massive destruction, burying communities under mud and debris. Each of these hazards can significantly impact human life and the environment. They can destroy homes and infrastructure, disrupt ecosystems, and even cause loss of life. It's crucial to understand these hazards and to respect the power of volcanoes. Despite their beauty, volcanoes remind us of nature's destructive power. Can we predict when a volcano will erupt? It's a question that has puzzled scientists for centuries. When it comes to predicting volcanic eruptions, modern science uses a variety of methods. One of the most common techniques involves monitoring seismic activity. Volcanoes often produce small earthquakes before they erupt, as the magma beneath the surface pushes and breaks the rock. These tremors can give scientists a valuable heads up. Yet, not all seismic activity leads to eruptions, and not all eruptions are preceded by noticeable seismic activities. This makes it a bit of a guessing game. So while seismic monitoring is helpful, it's not foolproof. Another method used to predict eruptions is the monitoring of gas emissions. Volcanoes release gases such as sulfur dioxide and carbon dioxide that can increase in volume as an eruption nears. By monitoring these gases, scientists can sometimes predict an impending eruption. However, again, it's not a surefire method. Some volcanoes release gases continuously even when they're not about to erupt, making it difficult to determine a clear pattern. The third method involves observing ground deformation. As magma rises to the surface, it can cause the ground around a volcano to swell. Using tools like satellite imagery and GPS, scientists can detect these changes and predict an eruption. But like the other methods, ground deformation isn't always a reliable indicator of an eruption. Predicting volcanic eruptions is a complex and challenging task. Each volcano is unique, with its own set of behaviors and warning signs. Furthermore, the data collected can be difficult to interpret, and sometimes volcanoes erupt without any warning at all. Predicting volcanic eruptions remains an inexact science, but advancements continue to improve our ability to forecast these powerful events. As technology improves and our understanding of volcanoes deepens, we inch closer to being able to predict these awe-inspiring yet potentially destructive natural phenomena with greater accuracy. Beyond their destructive power, volcanoes have played a crucial role in shaping our world. These fiery giants have been the master sculptors of our planet, carving out landscapes with their powerful eruptions. From the highest mountain peaks to the deepest oceanic trenches, volcanoes have left their mark in every corner of the globe. Moreover, volcanoes have also had a hand in shaping our climate. You see, volcanic eruptions release huge amounts of gases and particles into the atmosphere. These can reflect sunlight back into space, cooling the earth and influencing our climate. And let's not forget about life itself. Volcanoes have played a part in creating the very ground beneath our feet. Their eruptions produce fertile soils, perfect for plant growth. They've even birthed entire islands, like the Hawaiian archipelago, creating new habitats for life to flourish. Volcanoes, for all their fury, have been instrumental architects in the world we inhabit.